Ha, how are you doing? I'm doing great because today I'm here with my August wrap up. I feel like that was the end of August. I got in such a bad of a reading slump, but I still somehow managed to read quite a bunch throughout the month. So I'm very excited to talk to you about it all. But let's get going because my laptop is dying and I have all my notes on here. <laughs> So let's start with some stats. So in total, I read 14 books, which amounts to 4,632 pages read, which is an average of 330.92 pages per book and 149.45 pages per day. For the format, I read three books I own, two ebooks, six galleries from Net Gallery, and three library books. For Star Raiders, it's a bit abysmal, I know, but bear with me. We have six two stars. Two three stars, four four stars, and two five stars, which is an average rating of 3.14. For age range, we have one middle grade, five young adults, and eight adult books. And for genre, we have four mystery thrillers, six contemporaries, and four fantasy novels. So not a wide variety, but oh well. So starting off with the first book that I read in the month of August, Being the Good, the Bad, and the Aunties by Jessica Cusie Tonto, which gives to the five stars too. This is the final book in the Aunties trilogy, which I have previously really enjoyed. But this final book just was not it. I feel like it lost all the magic, charm, everything I loved about those first two books were absent from this one. The plot just, I mean... All of these plots for this entire series have been a bit ridiculous and you do need a bit of suspension of disbelief from them all. But this one especially, it just felt so contrived and I just it was not a big fan and I also feel like a lot of the characters were a bit personality list in this book. Which, you know, the big personalities is what I read the series for. But like, I'm glad it's, it's the end of the series because I feel like we're beating the dead words at this point. Then next, I read The Break of Pact by Emma Lord, which I gave to the five stars to Nancy Gallagher from Net Gallery. This is a release I was very excited about because it's... Uh, uh, because it sounded right in my alley and I really enjoyed a Emma Lord before. So I was hoping that this was going to be great. And then I was loving the first half. And then the second half just felt like a entirely different book. Where I just, I was not vibing with it anymore. I wasn't the biggest fan of women characters. I didn't ship them. <laughs> because it's a romance book. That's a big thing. And then I also just like really didn't like the ending. The way things were resolved. The I can't like everything about that. I just really disliked. So I just, I ended up also being a bit of a bore. So it's a two star. Very, very disappointedly. Then a book that went the complete opposite direction of that is Accident and Foes by Amanda Woody, which I gave out of five stars. So it's not a galley from that galley. This one started off so rough. Like, I did consider the enoughness like pretty early on because I just really wasn't vibing with the writing of it. But I checked some reviews and I saw a lot of people that had read it and reviewed it saying, like, I hated the first bit of this. But I fucking ended up loving this book. So I thought, let's push through it a little bit more. And then before I knew it, I was sobbing my eyeballs out. And I was loving every single second that I was reading. I do think the writing is still not the best. It does feel a bit kind of... I don't know, I feel like especially in the dialogues, it feels a bit unrealistic. The characters can feel a bit like too much of stereotypical archetypes. But I do think overall towards the ending, the author did a great enough job kind of like developing these characters and making them feel more real to me and having more of like nuance to them if that makes sense i also really i you know what i was gonna say really like the romance in this but that's not really i really love the two main characters and i love their connection and i think their friendship was so so beautiful and i feel like ultimately this book would have been some semi better to me if this was a friendship story instead of a love story but like i also didn't really hate them together as a couple, so I'm not complaining too much. And I just, when it comes to their, their personal journeys, it's also very beautifully done. That's, that's why I started sobbing. And yeah, I do recommend this. It's a really great YA contemporary. Then next, I read The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Rare, which I get four to five stars too. And you know what? This is not the best mystery thriller I've ever read, but I had so much fun reading this. Like, generally, I was pretty sick. I felt in such a mind fog and I wasn't able to focus on anything, but somehow I flew through this book. <laughs> Like, it was nothing. I had such, such a fun time reading this. I just, it kept me on the edge of my seat the entire time. I quite liked our main character that we were following. I thought she was a great protagonist. I also really liked this kind of, like, the subverted, the unreliable narrator because of mental illness kind of, like, trope. It is an unreliable narrator. She has mental illness, but the two are not connected, which I really appreciated. And it definitely also, like, speaks out against people who think the two are connected. I appreciated that a lot. Thank you, book. <laughs> because that's just, like, a trope and mystery thrillers like everybody hates don't they but yeah i just had a blast i do think the ending was a bit of a letdown it was not like the best but 
that's what kept me from like giving it a five star but like it was such such a fun time and next i read one by one by ruby to which i guess for the five stars too this concept sounded very intriguing to me but ultimately i feel like the execution wasn't the best this is dual pov and i don't think it needed to be one of the povs just com felt completely necessary to me if i'm gonna be honest the other one was pretty great though i like that character i like being in her head I had a fun time with that. Again, this is one where the reveal just was very lackluster to me. And because I feel like the... As much as I still have fun reading everything leading up to the reveal, I do feel like this is one that was weighed down by that reveal. Being so lackluster and also extremely predictable, I have to say. So, <laughs> therefore, it just... I don't know. It, this could have... This is one where the ending could have lifted it up and made it great, but instead it dragged it down, so it was a 3 star for me. Then next, I read Dark Harmony by Laura Talasa, which I gave 2 out of 5 stars to. This is the final book in the Bargainer series, and I, I wasn't living as fan of book 1. Book 2, I had a cheeky little fun time with, so I was actually very excited to delve into this book, especially because my main complaint for the series has been that I hate the romance, but I love the plot. And I thought, now that we have resolved every conflict that these two could ever have, this is gonna be very plot focused and it was but it just it stopped being interesting i feel like now at the loss i just took every boring decision when it came to this book and then every time something happened it would be followed by like a very lengthy sex scene and like these characters were fucking a lot my dude and it just it got a bit too much and i don't know i just ended up being quite bored by this one i do think something i really enjoyed in this book was our main character callie's kind of like personal journey not necessarily in this book but see that come to fruition in this book i guess where we have all of that development in the earlier books and now she's just like a badass bitch in this one and it feels earned it feels deserved it feels so well done that was my favorite part of this book but like all the rest i just i don't know i thought it was a bit of a bore <laughs> then next i read i'll have what he's having by deep Kalam, which gives you a five star still the guy from neck gary this is another one that just didn't and it broken for me execution wise which is not a shame because there's another one i was really excited for but i feel like the main couple just had zero chemistry i did like their personal journeys i felt like that was pretty decently done i like them as characters but i feel like as a couple it was sex and only sex and i just i didn't buy it i'm sorry and also the book just kind of got a bit boring and repetitive because it just i don't know i feel like it was very dragged out and it just it wasn't my thing i apologize i'm so sorry the next i read the death of mrs Westaway but with rare which i gave to the five stars too and there's another one i was really excited for because i heard many great things about it but it wasn't my thing i felt like this one this was very slow moving and just a bit uh, boring i also just i kind of i wanted more family drama and it's kind of what i was expecting from this one and it felt a bit lackluster and then i i predicted the big reveal like Dude, every single detail very early on, which was a, such such a disappointment. <laughs> then next, I read The Kleine Kaiserin by Hattie Van Aar, which I give you the five stars to. This is one of the Milo books. Milo is a is a series on Flemish TV that I love. So I decided to give a shot at some of their companion books, and this one is middle grade. So it's very young middle grades. It's like teeters on the edge of a children's book in my opinion like a children's chapters book of course but like it, it, i do, i would say it fits under that middle grade category so it, <laughs> it was a very different reading experience for me because that's not what i typically read but i think for what this is it's pretty decent like it's a very typical story i definitely have read stories similar to this very often in my own childhood and i thought the execution of it was fine which is not a surprise because Hattie van Aar is actually an author i used to read a lot as a kid so i <laughs> like one of my favorite artists when i was a kid so like it makes sense that i would also still like her writing as an adult although you know you never know but it clicked for me so i like that it's just that when it comes to a piece of blue media i feel like this was abysmal like honestly there was zero accuracies to the actual shows in this book which was just a bit of a disappointment but yeah i felt fine about it as a three star and then i also read it Oak from the storm by saskia Martis, which i give five to five stars to this is another middle book this one is aimed towards a bit more of an older target demographic i would say it's more in the ya age range and it definitely worked for me much much better it just it f also just as a fan of the show this i just 
this whole book played out like an episode in my brain because everything was just so vivid and I could hear the actors' voices while reading the dialogues in this, which means it's ultimately very, very accurate to the show, which I really appreciate because these are original stories. They're not like episodes adapted into books, which is, I feel like, a lot of like show companion books that I had when I was a kid were just like adaptations of like episodes. These are their own original stories within like this world with these characters, and I feel like this just felt so, so accurate. And on top of that, it's also just such a fun book. Like, I laughed at like, multiple times while reading this. I had such a blast reading this, and I just, I loved it. So it's a five star, maybe, again, not like a favorite book ever, but as a piece of Milo Media, this is perfect to me. The next, I read Tread Set Bind by Kika Hatsupulu, which I gave four to five stars to the guy from like, I just one I've been reading, wanting to read for a while because I've heard so many great things about it. I finally got around to it, and I had such a blast. It's not a perfect book. I feel like in the beginning, it was a bit clunky on its world building. I feel like it's very info at the start. It's very hard to keep things straight, but you just gotta push through it and let things play out, and it all makes sense. <laughs> Once you're like actually in the thick of the story, like everything makes sense, but in the beginning, and just like, oh, what did I just read? <laughs> because there's just so much, and like I said, it's a bit clunky. This is a debut, so it makes sense in that sense. But I really like our characters, I really like the center romance. I do feel like it's a bit underdeveloped, but overall, I think it's just it's a cute time. I love the plot, I think it's so much fun. And then, you know, this is one this is as a mystery plot in like a fantasy world. And this is one where I did see like the gist of the plot twist coming, but this still had me so gasped. <laughs> like I was in, I was shook it. I already had an out of day term, but I was shook it. Like nobody says that anymore. But I feel like that's the best way to describe why I felt when like that plot twist went down, even though I saw it kind of coming, because the way it was just done was so epic and grand and I loved it. And this is ends on such a cliffhanger, by the way. I just I want to tell you that, be prepared for that. <laughs> then next, I read Sunder World Volume 1, The Extraordinary Disappointments of Leopold Berry by Ransom Wicks, which I give five or five stars since I get it from Nagali. This is Ransom Wicks' latest novel, his first like actual novel since the Miss Peregrine's series, like outside of that world. So I was I was so excited for this because I love the Miss Peregrine series. And this one also just sounded right up my alley. And like, look at that cover. Isn't that everything you're obsessed with? Um, yes, it was. It was. This definitely feels like a volume one, like an introductory, like the start of something grand. And I am very excited to see all of that unfold because if I already loved this this much, I don't know what else is gonna come. I'm just, I'm so, so hyped. I loved Leopold. I think he's such a fun fake character to follow. And I love kind of like his personal journey. We do have some development in this book, but like there's still a lot of growth to go through, which you can tell like with the way things end. And then I also love the cast of side characters that we got already. I love Sunderworld. I think it's so interesting. And we didn't even have to spend that much time within that world in this book, but I think it's so interesting. And just overall the themes, the ideas of everything. I just, I was so obsessed with this. I inhale with this. I just, oh. Next we have Hearts That Cuts by Kika Hatsupuru, which I gave one of my stars to another guy got from Agali, like I said, book one, and I'm on the cliffhanger. So, reading book two. And honestly, I did like this one more than book one. It feels more tight. I definitely can tell that the author has a bit more widened experience. I love the direction this took of story and I thought it was so interesting. I love the way it was concluded. It's a bit open-ended, but in a way that just feels so real and so good. Again, I love the characters, love the side characters, love this world, love everything about it. It's just that this one felt a bit repetitive. There's like a prophecy in this book, and I feel like that prophecy gets repeated like 20 times in full because every single time we mention a prophecy the prophecy has to also be there and, and there's other things like that which just like kept coming back and that was kind of a bit frustrating which is why I kept it from being a five star but it's like it's so close because this was an amazing book and then lastly we have final offer by Lauren Asher which gives it five stars to there's a final book in the dream on billionaires which I really enjoyed that series but this book just wasn't it for me and I don't want to go in depth about it because it's sad but <laughs> basically i absolutely despised our female main character i just i it's on site you know the main character that was fine but ultimately i was like missing something from him like i feel like he was lacking a bit of depth to me the romance a second chance but not well developed at all and the third eye conflict is abysmal it's a crime against humanity i don't like it i hate it <laughs> so yeah i didn't absolutely hate this book there were some parts of it that i didn't enjoy i had a fine enough time reading it flew by but i just I really didn't like it. I'm sorry. I know this is a lot of people's favorite in the series, which makes me feel that much worse about not liking this one, but like, 
yeah i just i didn't but yeah that's everything i have for you for august i hope you enjoyed this video let me know in the comments if you had any of these books what you thought of them so some of the books you had in august and hopefully i'll see you around next time good Here I am again, the same old situation. What does the